let's just sew whatever. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna look super shiny and oily. Gross. Um, meh, whatever, I've been working hard. Um, in today's video, we are going to be making the Celine tote bag. Uh, by Swoon Sewing Patterns. I am so excited with how this turned out. Um, sorry for the black fuzzy. It's my tripod. I'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Um, yeah, I absolutely love the way this bag turned out. Um, I also have a video of us cutting and interfacing it. And I do have these triangle anchors available on my website. It's like $3 for a set of six. Very affordable. Um, I went ahead and added two main pockets to this bag because I absolutely love this style of pocket. I think they're super useful. Um, I do think that this bag could be made as a crossbody. If you wanted to, you could add anchors here and then on the other side or even centered over it. You just have to make sure it didn't interfere with this. Um, I cut my handles to uh, 20 inches. The pattern calls for 18. If I make this again, I would go 24 just because I don't have the biggest arms, but I do have larger arms and it's real tight, real tight. Um, but yeah, I absolutely had a blast making this bag. It's something that is actually pretty simple, but the end result looks very fancy. Um, so I hope you guys give it a try and enjoy the video, but don't forget to subscribe. And I'm really sorry, but Benjamin is not in this video. I don't know where he is. I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay, so what's really nice about this bag is it has very minimal hardware use. Um, so all I've got here are two 9-inch zippers, one 14-inch zipper, a uh, half inch D-ring, half inch swivel clip, and then I've got these triangle anchors instead of using one inch square rings. And then I just need one more zipper for the lining pocket. And um, we're ready to go. So I'm gonna start off by adding zipper tabs to my two front zippers. Uh, the pattern only calls for one front zipper pocket, but I wanted to make both my panels zipper panels so i'm going to go ahead and lay right sides together over the zipper and half inch seam allowance and i'm just going to repeat that along all sides of all the zippers And then we'll just flip that down and top stitch over it. And sometimes if your stitching isn't super straight, you can kind of refold it and fix it when you top stitch it. So that is our zipper tabs all finished. 
And this is for the front zipper panels. The pattern only calls for one, but I like the look of them both. So that's why I'm doing it. And then I'll probably give these a little press with my iron, watching out for the vinyl I just sewed on there. So with our zipper tabs done, we wanna go ahead and grab our pocket panels. And the bottom exteriors. And may as well grab the top exteriors while we're at it. And I'll just focus on one at a time. So I did not add my zipper tabs quite like the pattern suggests, but that is because I didn't want it to be too bulky when using vinyl. It can get a little bulky. So we're just going to go ahead and kind of center this. Matching up the centers. I've got my zipper face down on the exterior main panel. And you could go ahead and baste your zipper in place or you can lay your lining, one of your lining pieces down. I'm gonna go ahead and baste. And then grab one of my lining pieces and it's gonna go right sides together. Clip it from the back, flip it around, and then you can see your basting stitch. And you'll just come in just a little ways from that. Watch out for your zipper pull. Unzip it a little if you have to. And then I can press this I'm going to quickly iron it from the lining side and top stitch. Set my stitch length to about a 4.5. Kind of pull all the layers apart. And then we will add our top panel. Make sure your zipper pull is out of the way. Kind of line it up. You can either mark your centers and line it up that way or just make sure that these line up nicely. I'm gonna clip it from the back side. And I'm gonna baste my zipper in place. See how things don't look quite right? thought they might not. And then we'll grab our other lining panel right sides together, so linings are facing the linings, exteriors facing exteriors. Clipping it from the other side so that I can follow my basting stitch. And then I'm only gonna fold this up and top stitch through the exterior fabric, I'm going to be sewing through this seam. You don't want to fold this up and top stitch. You just want to let that lay nice and flat. So my stitch length is still at a 4.5, which is a good top stitch length. So and 
And then you can actually continue to just base all of these pieces together. And I just realized that this panel is a little bit shorter, um, but I'm I'm 90% sure we're going to catch it in our seam allowance, so I'm not going to be too worried about it right now. Um, but on the other panel, I will sew that bottom together first and then baste it all together. So I'm just going to trim my excess zipper tabs. If you followed the instructions for the pattern, you should not have that excess. I'm a rebel, so I do. <laughs> And if you are worried, if you did it this way and you're worried about people seeing those raw ends, you could add two rivets right here, just to kind of give it a little accent. And then they can't, they won't be able to open the pocket far enough to see that. Um, but I don't think anyone would open the pocket far enough to see that anyway. So I will leave it as is. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, and then we're just gonna repeat those steps on the other side. I will add a nameplate on this side before I sew it all together. Okay, so zipper face down on top of your bottom front panel. And I'm gonna baste that on. one of your lining panels Oops. Fold that down, I'm gonna iron it from the lining side. And just use a lot of steam. Top stitch. Make sure things are pulled out so that your zipper looks nice and straight. really carefully lay that over top, clipping it from the other side of the bag so that I can baste that zipper on. And if you have to unzip your zipper a little, you are more than welcome to do so. It couldn't hurt. Other lining panel. And then I'm going to flip this up. And hopefully you guys can see this. My zipper tape is showing a little bit more on the top than it is the bottom, but what you can do to kind of adjust that is just fold the top panel down a little bit further and then top stitch. So instead of me pulling apart that seam all the way, I'm kind of folding it back onto itself to make the zipper tape um, appear even. So instead of pulling it, I'm just gonna kind of gently fold it And then 
then instead of me top stitching and basting all the way around, I'm just gonna sew the bottom panels together. along that bottom. Just in case, just cause you never know. So hopefully that makes sense. I laid my pattern piece like that, clipped only the lining panels and then lifted it up. Otherwise, um, if you like line them up or something, your panels are gonna be a little bit wonky. So I just clipped it from the right, the wrong side, flipped it over and sewed along there. And then now if you so choose, you can baste all of that together. And I do choose, so I'm going to. Like you could definitely add piping to this bag to give it a little extra oomph. Um, probably not if you're gonna do the connectors the way the patterns say. But yeah. So I am not trimming any excess main fabric. I am only trimming excess lining and these zipper tabs. Oh. And I was going to add a nameplate and I totally forgot. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that really quick. I want it to be right about there. So I'm going to fold this in half. Kind of go an inch from there. Mark where I want it to go. I'm gonna have to undo my basting stitch, but that's okay. It'll just be along the bottom, so it's not a big deal. Fun fact, this tool has not been used as a seam ripper in a very long time. I don't think I've changed the blade since I purchased it, so ugh, it's pretty bad. All right, so now I can kind of head in there. I lost the other marking. Hold on a second. Um, so yeah, there's my center. There's my one inch and there's the other one inch. Okay. Sometimes they blend in so well. just going to really carefully poke those holes. You want to make sure they're nice and parallel and make sure you're not stabbing through your lining. Okay. Poke the nameplate through. Grab your washer. And now we've got our nameplate on there. And our zipper pockets are finished. They're these nice big zipper pockets. People are going to love, because I'm kind of in love with this bag already. And we can work on our side gusset pieces now, I think. So 
the way I clipped together my side pieces when I was cutting this out is wrong because I, I'm not gonna lie, but I didn't read the directions, you guys. <laughs> oh wait, no, technically it's not wrong. Oh wait, mm -mm. is it? Yeah, I feel like right sides together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew across at a half inch seam allowance along the bottom. And then I do not think this is a necessary step, but it's one that I want to do. Um, I'm going to open this up and make it a butterfly stitch. So I'm going to sew across either sides of that open seam. regret doing this later but right now I don't regret it <laughs> okay half inch seam allowance open it up And then these are going to get attached to these panels. I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm guessing rounded sides together. So I'll go ahead and fold this in half. Even though I kind of already have. But I'll make a little snip in the center. curvy sides together. Boom, there we go. So I can line up the center of that butterfly stitch seam and clip, and then I'll line up the top here and clip. Man, I wish I had thought of piping. It would look so beautiful in this bag. Um, I am not adding those connectors the way the pattern suggests. I'm gonna be adding anchors, but I'll do that after I attach the side panel. And then you're just going to kind of work this into the seam. If it's a little short, um, just kind of move your gusset in a little ways. And that will kind of help make up for it. See how I'm, I'm clipping it almost next to my basting stitch? That just kind of helps fit it into place within the size requirement. And then if your curve isn't sitting right, just take your scissors and make tiny little snips. Nothing too major, just tiny little snips into the curve. And you'll see it kind of take the shape a little bit better. So we've got that all clipped together. And now we can sew around the outer edge. So 
I'm going to use a stitch length of four and a half inch seam allowance. And just sew across. I am taking this into account as far as my half inch seam allowance since my panel didn't quite meet up. Back stitch there. Okay, so this curve is where it might get a little bit tricky. So I'm pulling the vinyl into place a little bit more, going nice and slow around that curve. And I may, I actually, I think I'm going to sew around the bottom one more time just to reinforce because of those snips. See, I'm like right up next to it. So over time that could kind of stretch out and rip further in. So I'm gonna start up here, backstitch. Come in just about an eighth of an inch to reinforce all of that. down my seam allowance. I'm only cutting my exterior fabric. I'm not cutting through my side gusset. And then right here is where it says to add your um, strap connectors and you'll actually if you're using vinyl ones you'll be adding it over the side panel so you'd be adding it here and here but since I'm using these triangle anchors um, I do not want to risk them maybe perforating the vinyl or something like that so I am going to actually just center it here instead of here um, just cause I don't trust the two different thicknesses. So mine are going to go right there and right there. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly, um, insert these and then I'll be right back. If you guys are interested in seeing a tutorial on how these are inserted, I'll link a video in the top corner. All right. And then we're going to finish off the other side of the bag. zoomed in no maybe okay there we go so I'm gonna fold this in half clip it the straight side goes towards the outside and the curves get matched up line up the center of my seam and the top of the bag. I think I just used way too large of a seam allowance for the side gusset, maybe, maybe. Or maybe it's how it's supposed to be, I don't know. This bag reminds me a lot of the Stargazer bag by Blue Calla that was also part of the Bag of the Month Club. Um, and I did make that bag and I did hate that bag. <laughs> um, this one just seems um, more 
like easier and a little more practical. The other one, I know a lot of people love that bag, so I'm not trying to sit here and bash it or anything like that, but I just don't feel like the shape of it is very practical. And maybe it's just the interfacing combination I use, but I felt like the bag was really difficult to get into because it was so, so tiny at the very top and then it was so large inside. I was just like, I don't like this bag. So, if you care, that's my thought. Uh, you could also use a stapler to hold all this in place if you wanted to. I'm not too worried about it. Um, so I'm going to go around the outside edge again. Half inch seam allowance. And then just for consistency's sake, I'll go ahead and add a second row of stitching to that. And then I'm just trimming down my exterior fabric. I'm not trimming down my vinyl. Well, if I do trim down my vinyl, it's not because I did it on purpose. <laughs> Alright, and then if you are adding the strap connectors, you'll add them now over the vinyl. Gosh, this is so pretty! I know I said it last time I opened the bag too, but it just... I love this combination. I want to keep this bag, I think. Um, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and add my strap anchors. If you are making this bag and you're adding strap anchors too, what I've done is I've laid my ruler one inch above the zipper panel and laid my connectors centered over the one inch mark. So there's like a quarter of an inch from each side laid that down and then marked them out. So if you're, if you're wondering what the placement looks like, that is what it looks like. They look pretty good there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and then we're ready to work on the, um, on putting the exterior together. All right, triangle connectors are attached. So we can put right sides of this bag together. I'm gonna line up the butterfly seams. Hopefully our stitches match. I feel like it looks pretty good. I'm gonna add two clips there. I don't want it to shift. And then this side, your straight edges should be matched up right now. So if you've got curves going the wrong way, you messed up. I didn't wanna tell you, but you messed up. You might wanna rethink some things. Um, so these feel like they're fitting together pretty well. It's a, it's kind of awkward, but I'm excited to see how the bag turns out. Um, I could definitely see adding some piping to the main panels. I don't know that I would add piping to this seam because we do have to top stitch it. Um, I think we'll be butterfly stitching it as well, which is going to be interesting. <laughs> So I've got that all put together. Stitch length is set to four, especially with vinyl. You don't want anything too thin. And I'm just gonna do a half inch seam allowance starting at the top. If you are not good at eyeballing your seam allowance, go ahead and mark it out. I'm telling myself this and you this, 
but just like give yourself a little mark here and there so you can follow along if you don't have a seam guide you can follow your seam guide too if you want but in case you somehow get distracted hopefully that's a helpful little hint for you I'm gonna back stitch a few times, not too much, just one little tack stitch, um, just because that seam, you know, might brush up against something and it could possibly come undone. You never know. All right. This looks like a pair of lips. I'm into it. Ooh, hello, hello. That looks really nice. There's it from the inside. I really, I like how it opens. So this is gonna have a zipper panel and then it has um, like snap connectors that come across the top to close it in even more. So I'm, I'm liking it so far. Um, the directions say to do a butterfly stitch along the side seam, just like we did for the bottom panel. However, the tester shows just one single line of stitching um, where they folded that seam over. So if your machine can handle it, um, it's definitely going to be more beneficial to the longevity of your bag to top stitch down to one side. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to fold it over. I'll probably fold this towards the quote unquote front of the bag. So where my nameplate is. So what I'm doing is I'm folding my seam allowance towards the side that I'm the side that I'm going to top stitch. So luckily this bag is big enough that this may not be too awkward. Oh, sorry if my head's in the way. I'm trying to get this under my machine. So you could set your stitch length to a 4.5. and then just kind of pull those layers apart and go slow. And what you could do is actually top stitch the other side as well if you are a firm believer in um, symmetry in that way, you could top stitch across it and you'll just be sewing through one layer of vinyl. So. kind of pull it apart bit by bit not as easy as it seems I feel about this. <laughs> I think it's just because my exterior fabric is like slinky. Alright, there we go. Definitely want to make sure you've got a full bobbin for this. And as I say that, watch me run out. <laughs> nice and slow over where your bottom seams match up because you don't want to go too fast and ruin the look of it. Now that I've got the hang of this, the side panel isn't too bad. It's kind of like um, putting on pantyhose or something, how you have it scrunched up. 
kind of let it go slow. So you don't want to use anything that's going to get too messed up by being crinkled. Alright, I am just going to add the one line of stitching. Ooh, that is so sharp. I love how it kind of creates a nice detail with that accent stitching. Um, oof. So if you'll notice, I did not catch this lining pocket like I thought I would. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do something bad. I'm going to kind of fold this down and top stitch it again. So it's gonna pull on the pocket a little bit but not too much that it's going to really mess up the shape of the bag. So I'm just going to fold this into that seam allowance and sew it down because, I mean, yeah, it's a cool pocket to like really, really hide stuff in, but I'm not sure a customer would appreciate it. So I'm just pulling it down. And sewing it into that seam allowance. So... that the pocket is closed. Yeah, that didn't mess up my seam allowance at all. So no worries. Um, and then we're working on, um, I'm gonna go ahead and add the zippered pocket off camera because it's not in the pattern. And someone got mad because I didn't follow the pattern as closely as they would have liked which made me laugh, but whatever. Um, so our exterior is completed. I'm gonna add the pocket and then I'll get back on camera and work on the um, recessed zipper panel and finishing this bag up. Okay, so I've got my zipper pouch, zipper pouch, zipper pocket sewn and left my lining of that pocket open so that we can birth the bag through that. Uh, here is my other pocket piece. So I'm just gonna clip these together for now so I don't lose them. And my other lining piece needs to be sewn together down the center. This is a 3 4 inch seam allowance. No, it's not. It's half an inch, sorry. Half an inch. Um, and then I'm just going to sew down one side. I'm not gonna butterfly stitch this, otherwise it kind of deletes the purpose of it being waterproof. As I was working on my zipper pocket, I ran out of bobbin just as I started to um, sew around the pocket. So I think that means I had just enough bobbin thread to top stitch that. Thank you, bobbin gods, I appreciate you. Um, so we're gonna fold this in half and mark a little snip in the center. That's for later. So now I can set my side gusset um, off to the side. But um, this would actually be kind of perfect if you wanted to add like a water bottle holder. Um, you could add just like two pieces of elastic here um, or like fold over elastic or uh, like a mesh with fold over elastic because this here would probably be just enough to set something inside. So in case you needed an idea, there's one for you. Um, so let's go ahead and work on our recessed zipper. I've got my zipper by the yard cut to a little over 14 inches. I'm just really quick going to press it with steam. That helps get the little kinks out. I don't have it sewn shut, so let's make sure I don't mess this up, huh? I'm going to grab some double-sided tape. Grab a few strips of half inch. Cut 
way too long because that's always fun. You could also use quarter inch if you wanted to. And you could also use it on the waterproof canvas. I'm just adding it to the vinyl because I can't press that, but I can press waterproof canvas. So I'm gonna peel that tape off and fold that over. And repeat with the other side. And something I like to do is clip these together, right sides together, while I fold this last side over. Uh, just because even if you have the best intentions of folding things to the correct size, things can get a little uneven. But I want to make sure that these are the same size. So voila. Now I have my two top sides of the main panel zipper. So I'm going to lay the lining fabric face down and clip that into place. Again, you could use double sided tape if you wanted. Or if there's another trick that you know for making the recessed zipper panel, I say go for it. Okay. So now I'm gonna grab my zipper. What you want to do is you want to unzip it a little bit so that you can fold your zipper tape at an angle within the seam allowance. So I'm just kind of butting it at a 90 degree angle. You can kind of trail it off if you want to instead um, kind of like curve it instead of folding it at a corner angle up to you and then you can baste this in place or you can go ahead and sew it together um, I think for this I'll go ahead and sew it together just because it is pretty small And you want to make sure that you do not sew on your zipper. You just want to sew on that zipper panel. So don't go past the fabric of your zipper panel pieces. And you want to make sure that your zipper was face down so the zipper teeth are facing your exterior fabric. Yeah. And then I cannot iron my vinyl, but I can iron this waterproof canvas. So I'm going to press this really quick and then I'll fold the vinyl on top and we'll top stitch. Okay, so I've got that pressed and I'm just going to fold it over. And I did cut my lining to be a little bit bigger, so if it looks weird, that's why. My stitch length is set to 4.5, and I'm gonna sew along all four sides of this rectangle.
and then we'll just repeat all those same steps. Uh, only for this side, what I like to do is line up the back, the back edge here, clip it from the wrong side. And then just kind of make sure that you fold your zipper at the same place. So this might be the side that if you're going to baste it all that you baste this. Just so everything sits nicely. And you really don't have to baste the entire zipper in place. You could only do it where it counts, where it's really crucial. And this is a base stitch, so we don't have to worry about it being super, super secure. What's happening over here? Okay, so then we can lay right sides together. So our, our lining pieces are facing each other, the vinyl pieces are facing each other. I'm clipping from the opposite side so that I can flip this over and then sew. Make sure you keep your zipper out of the way. Clip this together. And if these don't quite line up, just kind of refold it, resituate it. And then start sewing. On your fabric only, not your zipper tape. And then same thing, I'm going to iron my lining side and then fold over the top vinyl and top stitch. The zipper panel is ready to be sewn to your lining. Okay, so we're gonna grab our lining panel. Either one is fine, I'm pretty sure. We'll mark the centers just because it couldn't hurt, right? Go ahead and mark the centers of the top and the bottom because we're going to have to line up that bottom gusset. Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and start with the side that already has a zipper attached. I'm going to fold this in half and again just make a little tiny snip at those center marks. And we're going to center the zipper panel over it. Facing up, you want to see those zipper teeth. And right now the zipper pull is to the left side. You can baste it in place or you can go ahead and grab the top lining panel. And kind of center that as well. I'm not basting it because... There isn't much that can shift around and move, especially with all these clips I've got going on. <laughs> so I'm gonna sew that at a half inch seam allowance. And then you're gonna flip it up 
and top stitch through the seam allowance like that. go ahead and repeat with this side. I've got my center snips, center snips. And I usually trust my center snips, but it couldn't hurt to just make sure that your lining panels line up pretty nicely with the other side. And we'll lay the other top panel over top. Inch seam allowance. And then we'll flip this up and top stitch through the seam allowance. And now I think we need to sew our um side straps together and i'm gonna quickly off camera attach my zipper end cap i do have a video showing how to install this um so you can check out that video i'll link it up here in the corner boom right there okay zipper end piece attached and we can go ahead and um i like to unzip about halfway and clip the zipper to the zipper pull. This just keeps it out of the way of the lining side panels while we're sewing it together. So go grab your gusset and grab your two one inch by nine inch pieces. I'm gonna use a piece of vinyl to fold the raw ends into the center. Use a piece of double sided tape, not vinyl. Hello, hair. Goodbye. Somehow this double-sided tape ended up in my purse after the sewing retreat, so it's a bit of a mess. I'm going to fold the raw ends into the center over that double-sided tape. And you can let those pieces just butt up right next to each other. You don't need to leave any kind of a gap. I always feel like I'm making little tiny, tiny, um, like handbag straps when I make connectors like this. I'm like, how tiny and cute would that be? Got that all folded together. I'm gonna grab my half inch D-ring and half inch snap hook. These are both from my, um, my own hardware that I sell. This is the slim half inch D-ring and then just the regular half inch snap hook. I'm gonna lay those right sides together and sew along each side. Well, I guess no matter what, it would have been right sides together, but um, yeah, so along each side after folding in half, raw ends pointing towards each other. And if you think that your machine can't sew through that, or um, let's say your um, 
Walking foot is a little too wide. You could just add like one, two, three rivets and that would be cute and stable. So here is my um, raw edges that I folded in the center and I'm just folding those onto each other. If you're worried about things moving around, you could add a piece of double-sided tape or something like that. So now these are going to get sewn, they're going to get basted on to the center panel or to the center of the gusset panel, I should say. So one on each side. Now we are going to um, line up the centers and sew across, sew the bag together. Uh, I'm going to start with the side without the zippered pocket. Um, if you are following the bag, in like the handbag instructions, feel free. But if you want to birth this bag through the lining, listen to me. So I'm going to clip it along the side without a pocket. I'm going to line up my curvy seams. Make sure you move the other side of your lining out of the way. Make sure your zipper is not where it shouldn't be. Kind of line up your curves. So let me just explain to you my thought process on this. I am going to be sewing one side of the bag lining completely together, so this side. And then when we sew the other side together, we're going to leave the bottom open. Um, probably about from the start of the one curve to the start of the other curve so that we can easily pull the bag through. And then we're going to pull the lining through the pocket we left open and sew it together that way. So if it sounds confusing, that's cause well it is, but we're gonna show it to you. We being me. And I'm gonna sew this with a little bit wider of a seam allowance than it calls for. Uh, just so it fits nicely into the exterior of the bag. So stitch length set to four. got one side attached and then I'm going to clip the other one together. So I am going to clip at the center but I'm not going to sew that part. want to make sure it all kind of fits together nicely. 
Ooh, I love this color combination. All right. Um, so I would normally like to sew the curve together first. But if I do that, that's literally the same size as my zippered pocket. And the whole point of leaving it open in the lining is so you have something a little bit bigger than that. So I'm gonna start at the top. And just sew down straight until I reach where the curve starts. And add a back stitch, and then I'm gonna stitch off into the seam allowance too. And that just creates um, a little more stability when we're turning the bag so it doesn't just like rip it out. So I'll start that here too. I'm gonna start in my seam allowance until I get to the seam allowance length I want. So there is our lining completed. I'm gonna turn it right side out. You can unzip your zipper and unclip it. Everything looks good there. So I'm gonna turn this right side out. Put this inside. And line up your top seams. Um, I don't know if I want to clip from the liner or the exterior. This looks like Snorlax or something. It looks like a big Pokemon face. <laughs> I'm just going to clip around the curves nice and slow. Make sure your little strap connectors are poking inside your bag. Line up those side seams. Pop that inside. And those um, side connectors should line up with the side seam of your bag. seem a little weird you can just kind of pull readjust if things pucker a little too much in one location you need to go back and adjust a seam allowance of some width just kind of readjust but everything seems to line up pretty well uh, the shape of this bag is actually reminding me of the Alexa bag from I think so uh, just the way it kind of like opens up it's got this small ish bottom but like opens up yeah but again this is just more practical of a sew um so i'm gonna zoom you guys in and we'll top stitch around the top of the bag okay nice and zoomed in I've got my stitch length set to four. I'm gonna start kind of this top panel here. And this is another one where if you're not sure you can follow your seam allowance, mark it out. Just use a ruler and kind of make little marks to follow. What's kind of interesting about the shape of this bag is I'm not sure anyone would notice if something was a little bit off just because it is such a curvaceous bag.
leave those. All right. Um, I will have to, I don't want to. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of add some little snips to that seam allowance. I really don't like to trim my seam allowance down. It makes it a little bit harder for me to top stitch. As crazy as that sounds. So I'm just kind of like we snipped the side seams. I'm just snipping the top curve a little bit. Make sure you don't snip through any important stitches, of course. All right. And now we can separate the lining from the exterior. Let me zoom you guys back out. And we can pull the exterior through the lining much easier than if we had just left a little zipper pocket open. Checking my seam, making sure everything looks nice before I sew up the bottom of the bag. Yep. All right, so here is my bottom lining opening, and here is my zipper pocket. I'm reaching through, and I'm gonna pull the lining only back through my zippered pocket. So let me pull the lining out this out. Okay. So I can line up my side or my center seams. I can still see my center snip so I'll go ahead and clip that. And then just kind of clip your curve together as well. And at this point, if you want to add a nameplate that people will see when they look, or a name tag when people look inside the bag, you can do that. And then I'm gonna start where I ended, not at where I trailed off, but where my seam allowance should be. Go around that curve. And then I'm not going to trim that seam allowance down just because it's not really crucial. But I will shove it back in through that zippered pocket and kind of turn and clip the exterior of my bag. I gotta say, I'm loving the shape. I didn't think I would, but I do. And fold your, I'm not sure if you're supposed to top stitch through these cause it is a little bit bulky, but my machine can handle it. So I will, but I'm gonna fold that into the lining of the bag and continue clipping. shoving my lining into the bag, but I have not closed my zippered pocket yet just because I want to push out the seam. Make sure everything sits nicely. And clip 
the top first. So if you did not trim the top curve seam allowance, make sure you're rolling that seam in between your fingers so that the curve shape is pretty true to your top stitching. glad I did not add fleece to this bag. Man, oh man. When I was cutting out this bag at first, I thought maybe adding fleece would help give it some body, but the combination of woven fuse, Decaville light, and the waterproof canvas have really added a lot. Um, if you're making this bag with regular cotton or canvas, I do not think you need the Decaville light. I had to add it because I'm using knit fabric to make this bag. So this main panel here is a knit. It's a repurposed skirt. Um, but yeah, it's standing up on its own right now. It's got a lot of nice weight, weighted body to it. All right, so everything is clipped together now. I'm just gonna push my lining inside a little more, make sure everything fits nicely. So now I can sew this closed. Okay, stitch length is going to be set to 4.5, so I can top stitch this. Put that lining pocket back inside. Close it up. Alright, so... I'm going to start on the back of the bag in kind of an inconspicuous area. So it looks like I could hide a back stitch right there. Nice and slow. Resituate. connector here is going to be kind of thick to sew through. Go nice and slow. zipper out of the way, bring down your side connector. Again, this is going to be really thick, so just kind of go slow. Or um, you can choose not to top stitch through those. I still have not added my handles. 
um, or I mean sewn my handle. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quick. I'm just going to speed that process up because you've seen me make handles a million times. And I have no new tricks for you. Um, but yeah, that is looking so cute. I love the shape of it. And I'm excited to see it all finished. All right, you guys, I've got my straps all riveted on. I'm really glad that I lengthened the straps. I feel like 18 was way too small. Um, you might even wanna go up to maybe 24 inches, especially if you've got a thicker arm. Um, but I am really, really happy with the way the bag turned out. Um, and I personally would probably sell this particular bag. I'm gonna be selling it for $130. Um, just because the materials and, you know, time, etc. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something from this tutorial. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And let me know down below if you'll be making this. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!